I thought we had a couple questions. Oh, there we go. Sure. Uh, Mark, do you wanna you wanna try and field this one? Yeah, let me start on let me start on like kind of like the pieces OS side of things and I'll kind of uh, pass that off to uh, Mac. Yep. But yeah, the the trend of being able to, you know, write and dart specifically. Um, I don't do a ton of the UI stuff it enables us to be able to write about 90, 95% of the code that we need in Dart and then basically package up any sort of specific, uh, you know, operating system specific code and any sort of uh, binaries that then we can interact with Dart FFI so that overnight and, and honestly, uh, you know, ship it once in Mac OS or ship it once on Windows and then it works on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, which is enables us to be able to move so, so quickly instead of in the JavaScript world where we would have to use Electron or or some other... Ionic, you know, oh. uh, yeah, React Native, whatever else it might be. So it's it's so, so nice, and it enables us to be able to ship these experiences across all different operating systems so, so quickly. Yeah. Um as well as the ability to be able to leverage some of our, our backend technologies, which I, I've, I touched up on a little bit with the open source TypeScript SDK, but is also available in Dart and will be in the future that some of our other really awesome uh, integrations and applications use, such as the desktop application. I, I think that it is, you know, for us, we, we wanted to build a native app first and foremost because we believe AI should be a part of the operating system, right? We believe it should unify Mac OS, Linux, and Windows in a way that is intelligent, proactive, and helpful. And we wanted to start with developer productivity um, where we could be a tool between tools, understanding what's going on in each of these pillars, but also to uh, respect the privacy and the security and, and the performance requirements that our consumers and our users expect, right? And so Dart was really amazing, kind of like what Mark had mentioned about the isomorphism and the idea that you can say, hey, I can build a Mac app off of a Dart code base, but I can also take that thing and compile it for a Linux uh, server that's wrapped in a Docker container and deployed you know, to the cloud. Similarly, uh, the advancements in Dart right around the transpilation towards JavaScript, that's exactly what you see in the web world with Rutfix stuff. Fun fact, Dart transpiled to JavaScript actually runs 50% faster than handwritten JavaScript. So you get that benefit of strong typing and type safety, but also the performance of like a really nice compiler, aka closure compiler behind the scenes. And then the last one is this, Dart is just continuing to blow people's minds. They're doing a lot of stuff with WebAssembly. They're doing a lot of stuff with isomorphism on the edge, on the, on the edge clouds, on the edge uh, clients. And like, I think it's gonna be pretty amazing for us. And by being native, we can go deep into the operating system with the FFI, but we can also go into the cloud realm and we can also go into the, the web world, right? With client side web experiences. So the versatility was really there for us. Um, and, you know, we're, we're trying to push the ball pretty far forward on what you can do with Dart. Uh, I can tell you that. And the only thing, the only thing I would add is as a result of Dart, we have Flutter. Right, and obviously we gain so many benefits by by using Flutter for our front ends and being able to build those consistent experiences across platform with one code base. And like the way that that impacts the technical debt of the company and our ability to move quickly, we don't necessarily need to consider. Okay, what is this going to look like on Mac on Windows versus Mac OS? How is that? How am I going to develop this experience for Windows or Mac OS out of the box? I mean, we have one code base works and and works beautifully for Flutter. Uh, with Flutter on Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, and um, we, we can continue moving fast. And what I'd say there, too, is like being able to reach out to, to really anyone on the team. A, a good majority of our team is just Dart engineers, right? And so, like, obviously, you know, the Flutter is, is you know, quite nice to pick up, especially coming from, you know, a Swift background or a web background or things like that. That's not a, a problem, but when it comes to, like, code reviews or, like, you know, algorithmic implementations or or even just knowing how to look at, you know, the APIs or, or larger mono repos, like if you know Dart, you can come into our company and, you know, just be up and running. And then also too, you can move from project to project really fluidly. Right. So I think it's been, it's pretty, pretty interesting for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I completely agree with Savo. And, and also to add on to that point, coming from the web world, 
transitioning from you know a javascript and a typescript back end uh as well as like a little bit of java uh back in the day yeah. moving into dart has been it, it's it's you can see so many parallels between a promise and a future and a web worker and an isolate and the list goes on and on um however with just type safety right out of the box uh and and dart has really really done a, a wonderful job there yeah, uh, definitely, Mark. I mean, like, uh, specifically with Flutterway, like, Dart has been uh, improving quite greatly. Like, uh, we already have, like, Dart interop uh, that uh, allows us to, like, kind of communicate uh, with the JavaScript code if we uh, need to, as well as kind of, like, uh, call Dart uh, functions from JavaScript code, uh, which is really amazing because uh, most of the times, like, uh, you might not be able to, like, uh, like uh, for us, like our Flutter extension, like our most of the logic of how things work are written in Dart code. And like for extension, uh, sometimes we need to like uh, uh, like do the same things, but from the browser side, from the uh, JavaScript side. So in such cases, like uh, Dart has this uh, great way to like uh, the Dart interop allows us to like uh, kind of uh, write Dart functions and like uh, declare them as like uh, a static interrupt function that can be uh, called from the JavaScript side. So uh, that can save us a lot of uh, like time as a developer, so, like uh, not to worry about like writing the same thing twice in whether it's uh, in Dart code and in JS code, but just uh, use that uh, Dart function and add it to like static interrupt and just call it there. Yeah. It's it's wow, that's like FFI with JavaScript, you know, <laughs> if you will. So it's, yeah. it's pretty neat.